Hello, I'm Stephen Bailey and I'm an NIH fellow at Vanderbilt University. For my DataCamp audition, I'm going to teach you how to explore three-dimensional image data in Python using matplotlib. For this tutorial, I would expect the student to have done some plotting in matplotlib before and also to be familiar with indexing arrays in NumPy. As anyone who's tried to solve a Rubik's Cube can tell you, working with three-dimensional data can be a major challenge. In addition to any changes in analysis you have to make, approaches to visualization can become orders of magnitude more complex. An example will make clear why. With a 2D image, there's only one way to plot it, the x-axis versus the y-axis. However, if we turn this 3x3 array into a 3x3x3 cube, a couple things change. First, we triple the amount of data we have to work with, which means that there are two more plots we can access. But we also triple the number of views we can look at. Not only can we draw this cube looking at it from the front, we can look at it from the side or along the top as well. So in total, there are nine plots we can make from this cube. So you can't simply plot the data. You have to make decision about what parts to plot, how to plot them, and how many plots are enough. Since these decisions may vary from project to project, every data scientist needs to have a go-to strategy for getting to know 3D data. A 3D image is essentially a stack of 2D arrays. In fact, this is often how data is acquired. An instrument makes some sort of reading in a 2D plane, adjusts up or down slightly, then takes another picture and continues this process until it's done. The indexing convention that we will use is Z, X, Y. Now it may seem counterintuitive to put the Z axis first, but it actually offers some computational benefits for applications and is standard in the popular scikit image package. To slice a 3D volume, we hold one axis at a constant value and allow the image data to vary along the other two axes. Setting the Z axis to zero, for example, would select the first X, Y slice. There are three possible ways to view the data. You can plot the x and y dimensions, like shown above, but you can also get images of the x, z, and y, z planes by changing which axis you hold constant. Now, let's do some visualization of data that's very near and dear to me, my own brain. For this data, the first axis, the z axis, extends from foot to head. The second one goes left to right, and the third axis encodes back to front. To start with, we import the pyplot package from matplotlib and then we load in the brain data from a NumPy text file. But before we attempt to visualize this data, let's make sure we know what we're dealing with. The type of brain is a NumPy n-dimensional array. Accessing the shape attribute shows that the brain has three dimensions, and the z-dimension is much shorter than the other two. Finally, we slice out just a few values and see that the brain's data is stored as floats. To plot images, I recommend following a three-step approach. First, initialize your figure, and then plot your data, and finally edit the axes and display the figure. So first, let's initialize our figure and axes using pyplot's figure function. This returns figure and axis objects, basically a canvas and a slot on the canvas for your plot. Next, slice your data into two dimensions. Here we are slicing along the x-axis, meaning we're going to return an image with data varying along the front to back and top to bottom axes. Then, we call mshow to draw the brain slice on the axis. Finally, call pyplot.show to render the image. And there it is! This slice cuts right through the middle of my head. You can see the cerebellum and much of the brain, as well as my protruding forehead and, and quite bumpy nose. But here's something odd. The brain is showing up as blue, and these axes, ticks, and labels aren't really providing much useful information. Let's change that. We can change the color map by passing in cmap equals gray to mshow. We can eliminate the axis ticks and labels by setting the axis property to off. Voila! We now have a cleaner, prettier picture of my brain. And now that we've set this up, it's quite easy to explore different slices of the volume very quickly. For example, by reducing the x value that we're slicing along, we can move leftward in the head. And when we render this image, we see that the axes have not changed but the data has. We can now see an eyeball and the mouth cavity. To look at the brain data from a different perspective, we can change the axis that we slice along. If we slice along the y-axis, we'll get a view that plots z against x, or top to bottom versus left to right. Similarly, we can hold the z-axis constant to get a top-down perspective, as if we're removing the crown of the skull. You've now plotted several slices from the data set but there are many more you could possibly plot. In fact, for this brain, there are 822 possible ways you could plot it. You rarely need to see all of these views, but you often will want to see several slices. 
One way to do this is with fly-through images, where you start at one end of an axis, plot slices along the axis as you move along it, then exit out the other side. These plots reduce the amount of time you have to spend interacting with the data and are especially useful when creating automated reports. To make a fly-through plot in matplotlib, we can use pyplot's subplots functionality instead of the figure function. Instead of returning a single axis plot to, to plot on, subplots generates a grid of axis objects based on the number of rows and columns you specify. As we discussed earlier, you can think of the figure as a canvas and each axis object as a slot for images. Let's now put all this together to plot a fly-through figure of the brain data. First, we use subplots to initialize a figure in an array of seven axis objects. Next, we pick seven points to slice along. Now we create a seven item loop, which we'll use to draw each image onto our figure. In each iteration of the loop, we'll create a brain slice, and then we select our subplot from the axes array and use mshow to plot that brain slice. Then we turn off the axis ticks and labels. And finally, we render the entire image with pyplot.show. Now we can see our fly through plot, which shows slices of the brain as we go from left to right along the x axis. As you can see on the left, we're starting on one side of the brain, we pass through the middle, and then we finish on the other side of the brain. Just like with single images, you simply have to change the axis you slice along to change the view and get a new fly-through image. This time, we're going from the back of the head to the front of the head. Well, that's it for this introduction to 3D data visualization with matplotlib. In the last several minutes, we discussed how 3D volumetric data can be thought of as stacks of two-dimensional arrays. We covered a three-step approach to setting up visualizations and how to use mshow to plot two-dimensional image arrays. At the end, we combined the strategy with the subplots function to enable quick visualizations of the entire brain at once. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you now feel less intimidated by 3D datasets. I had a really great time making it and hope to do more in the future.